Now, breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. Breaking news, the front door of a gas station shattered after reports of shots fired. Here's a live look at the scene in Harnett County. What happened here that's kept investigators busy since before midnight? And today you're going to notice a big jump in the heat hour by hour. It's going to feel like the triple digits with the heat index here in the afternoon. I'll show you how close we'll be to record highs. Also, a woman is in the hospital after being shot at a Raleigh apartment complex. The extent of her injuries this morning. And this morning, students will be back in the classroom in Wake County. We have team coverage at schools in the Triangle. Plus, we're monitoring the weather and traffic as you prepare for your day. As you get into that school day routine, we are here for you to help you get ready. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, if you're up at this hour, maybe it's your regular routine, but I know there's a lot of excited people out there, parents and kids mm -hmm. both, and they'll want to know what they're going to face when they get out to the bus stop. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center. Yeah, definitely seeing much hotter temperatures this week than we did yesterday. And we'll really feel it today. Yesterday was a bit of a transition day. Our skies are clear. We're at 71 degrees right now, and the dew point is at 6. Six. That dew point is likely to continue to climb a bit as we get through the day today, making it feel hotter than it really is. It is 63 in Roxborough, 70 in Rocky Mount, 64 in Southern Pines, 71 in Fayetteville and in Clinton. So our temperatures in the Triangle are 8 degrees warmer than this time yesterday and 10 degrees warmer in South Hill. Down south, we're not seeing as big of a spread. Look at this. By lunchtime, it'll feel like low 90s and feeling like 100, about the time the kids get off the bus. So address them appropriately, of course. Actual highs this afternoon will be in the mid 90s. This trend continues. Today stays fairly dry. We get into a wetter pattern later in the week. I'll show you when we're under a level one risk for severe storms. Ken? At 431. Good morning, everybody. Great to start your day off with us. We're taking a live look now at our census this morning, giving us up to the minute information as to what you can expect when you head out this morning. We're seeing a little bit of a slowdown right around South Sound Street on the south side of the belt line, but nothing that's going to make you late this morning. Elsewhere around the triangle and surrounding communities, all the major routes are delayed free. Let's take a look at one of those major roads this morning. This is I-40 and Wade Avenue. Traffic is sort of beginning to pick up a little bit, but all things are flowing nicely in both directions. Ken, thanks. Breaking news. Deputies respond to reports of shots fired at a gas station. This is happening at a Circle K in Harnett County. That's where Nick Perlin joins us live from the WRL Breaking News Tracker. And Nick, the front of the store has damage. And Renee, that's that's where we see investigators continuing to search throughout the morning. They've been here for hours since before midnight and I'll get behind the camera and I'm going to show you a little bit of what they're looking at here. And as I zoom in here on that door that was shattered, presumably by a gunshot, you can see here deputies and investigators searching out that area, trying to get more information about what happened here earlier this morning. I do want to get you to some video from the WRL breaking news tracker as well, just so you can get a better close up of the damage done to that glass window here. You can also see investigators looking at this black car as well. Again, we're still trying to figure out what exactly happened here uh, late last night into early this morning. I'm going to keep talking to these investigators as I get more information on what exactly happened. I'll be sure to update you. Live in Harnett County, Nick Pearl and WRL News. A woman is hurt after a shooting at an apartment complex in Raleigh. We first brought you this breaking story in the 11 o'clock news last night. The WRL breaking news tracker confirmed this information as police investigated Glasscock Street in East Raleigh. Police say a woman who was hurt was taken to the hospital. She is expected to recover. So far, there have been no arrests and no suspect information is available. Today, students will be heading back to class in the state's biggest school district. It's the first day for Wake Schools. WRL is your back to school headquarters. We have team coverage as your new morning routines ramp up, including keeping an eye on weather and traffic this morning. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from the Wake County Bus Depot at Rock Prairie Road. And Kelsey, the bus drivers are certainly getting ready for a big day. Renee, they are, and in just a few hours, all of these buses will be pulling out of the lot here, and good news for families and students, every route will be covered, but it's still normal to have a few delays on the first day of school. Right now, the district has 578 bus drivers. That's up from 560 drivers this same time last year. So the school system is seeing improvement, but they're at least 10 drivers short of their ideal staff numbers. New this school year, there will be a bus delay notification system. Parents 
residents can now receive texts and emails about bus delays. You can also still go to the district's website for some updates. We'll be monitoring delays throughout the morning as you are preparing to head out the door. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Wake County is also rolling out new policies designed to make sure students are safe, fed, and that teachers are being fairly paid for their work. WRL's Laura Levine is live at Green Magnet Elementary School. Laura, good morning. The district has a new system that they hope will help with student safety. Jeff, good morning. It is a big day here. We know tens of thousands of students will be welcomed by teachers and staffs at schools just like this here. Green Magnet Elementary School. You can see they have the welcome back sign ready to go. But we know some good news here. They'll have more educators inside these school buildings. The district says school vacancies are down. 253 teaching positions are vacant. That's 59 less than at the start of last year. And Wake School employees will also see bigger paychecks this year as pay raises are in effect. The raises include a 4% increase in the local salary supplement for teachers. The salaries for teachers with no experience start at about $48,000, $20 minimum salary for bus drivers, and $17.75 uh, an hour for other support staff. Also new this year, a 25 cent across the board price increase for school breakfast and lunch. That's taking effect this year and an effort to keep students safe. We've been talking about this, the Say Something Anonymous reporting a tip line that they want students and staff to use. That begins this year as well. Coming up at 6 a.m., I'll have a live interview with Superintendent Robert Taylor. He's going to be discussing and breaking down all of this as the new school year begins. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Today, students at St. Augustine's University will begin to move onto campus ahead of the delayed start to the fall semester. Classes were originally scheduled to start on August 19th. Earlier this month, St. Aug President Marcus Burgess said the university needed more time to make maintenance upgrades to dorms and classrooms. He also said St. Aug was working to finalize funding to pay overdue student refunds and staff salaries from last semester. Drugs, guns, and suspected criminals are off the streets in Durham after police announced a major crackdown resulting in 18 arrests. Police targeted the areas of Bragtown, Glenbrook Drive, and Cornwallis Road. The people who were arrested are facing charges including murder, trafficking, and possession of a stolen gun. It all started with one tip. Or crime reduction is such a partnership. So... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's up to the community. We want the community to provide us information, and then we act upon that information. 2024 data shows the number of people shot in Durham is up by about 44% compared to the first six months of 2023. Deadly shootings were up 16%. Non-fatal shootings were up 50%. Durham's police chief says she hopes with more operations like this one, the report, the next one, will show a downward crime trend overall. Good morning, Chris Lovingood here in the WRL Live Center. We have an update regarding the war going on between Russia and Ukraine. We have learned that in the second day of attacks, Russia is sending out drones and missile strikes hitting Ukraine. At least four people reportedly dead from this latest attack. You may recall we brought this to you yesterday during that first one from Sunday into Monday. At least seven people were killed during that. So we're talking about at least 11 people over the span of a couple of days here. These are some images I'm showing you here from Reuters, seeing the damage that was done to some buildings that were in various regions of Ukraine here. You clearly see the destruction that's happened there as first responders are there on the scene and Russia or Ukraine's military is saying that its country is under threat of a ballistic weapons attack and this is all happening as Ukraine has made significant strides making into Russia so this appears to be a response from Russia's end of things. The man who was shot by Nash County deputies will be charged after he is released from the hospital. Two deputies shot 52-year-old James Freeheim after they say he pointed a gun at them while they were trying to serve a warrant. This happened just after midnight yesterday morning at a home in Nashville. Lieutenant David Walker and Sergeant Miguel Salazar fired several shots at Breheim. Both are on administrative leave, which is standard protocol. The SBI is now conducting its own investigation. Coming up on 440 right now on your Tuesday, there is potential for more landslides in Alaska this morning as a community cleans up after one that hit Sunday. Notice that the, our next door neighbor's house was um, leaning against the other, other home. Now, a woman describes the moment the landslide happened, sending part of her neighbor's home into her yard. 
And before you sit down for breakfast, the warning from Walmart about apple juice that contains potentially harmful levels of arsenic. Now, so we give you this live look in Zebulon right now. There is potentially dangerous heat on the way. It's returning at the end of August here. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will tell us when that heat index will climb above triple digits. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. It is 443 on this first day of school for some kids across our area. Temperatures are warm, 71 in Durham, Raleigh, and in Fayetteville. And skies are clear. That's at least the nice thing as you're heading out the door. you got to make sure you got the backpack, you got the lunch, but you don't have to worry about the umbrella today. Now, later in the week, that's going to change, and we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit. A little bit warmer this morning than it was yesterday, and a touch more humid, too, starting in the 70s in most places this morning. By lunchtime, already 91, and temperatures will climb into the mid-90s this afternoon though it'll feel more like right around 100. So that will climb over the next couple of days, Wednesday and Thursday in particular. Um, we could be closer to uh, some record highs and even potentially a heat advisory. We'll check that out in just a few minutes. The Massachusetts woman whose murder trial in the death of a Boston police officer ended with a hung jury is now facing a civil lawsuit. The family of Officer John O'Keefe has filed a lawsuit against Karen Reed and two bars in the area. The lawsuit alleges Reed was drinking in the two bars in January 2022 and then hit O'Keefe, who was her boyfriend, with her SUV. Reed maintained her innocence at her criminal trial. Her defense team claimed law enforcement officers framed her. Prosecutors vowed to retry the case. A new trial is scheduled for January. A Texas judge temporarily blocked a Biden administration program from granting legal status to immigrant spouses of U.S. citizens. The Biden policy would allow unauthorized immigrants to apply for temporary work permits if they are married to a U.S. citizen, have lived in the country for at least 10 years, and passed background checks. The judge's order brings that program known as Keeping Families Together to a halt. 16 Republican-led states challenged the policy. Today, Italian authorities will question the captain of a super yacht that sank off Sicily last week, killing seven people. Prosecutors are investigating 51-year-old James Cutfield of New Zealand on possible charges, including manslaughter. Under Italian laws, being under investigation doesn't imply any guilt and doesn't necessarily lead to criminal charges. Other members of the crew have also been questioned. A man charged in the oldest capital murder case in Wake County will spend the rest of his life in prison. Brandon Hill was caught on camera shooting and killing Dwayne Garvey outside the America's Value Inn back in 2016. Wake County prosecutors pursued the death penalty, but the ACLU stepped in and jurors opted for a life sentence instead. A warning for you this morning before you grab that juice to go along with your breakfast. Walmart has recalled nearly 10,000 cases of apple juice because they were found to contain potentially harmful levels of inorganic arsenic. A great value brand of apple juice recalled is received, received, I should say, a more urgent classification Friday after its original announcement on August 15th. North Carolina is one of the affected states. So far, there have been no reports of illness. Happening this morning, Agriculture Commissioner Steve Troxler is hosting FDA and agricultural leaders to discuss the emergence of bird flu in dairy cattle. The forum is happening in the Kerr Scott Building at the State Fairgrounds at 10 a.m. The leaders will talk about their plan to address the spread of the virus from birds to cattle and the overall impact to the state's agricultural industry. State and local geologists will spend the next few days assessing the potential for more landslides in Ketchikan, Alaska, after one on Sunday killed a person and injured three others. Several homes were destroyed. Homes next to the slide area are still being assessed, and one person who lives in that area recalls the moment that disaster hit, sending her neighbor's house into her yard. There was a big flash that came on. Um, seen through the window, I thought it was uh, lightning. Then all of a sudden our house started shaking. Um, that was from the, the landslide and the house coming down into our yard. A landslide followed a weekend of rain after an abnormally dry month. 
always leads to problems when you have mm -hmm. that stretch um, of drought before the heavy rain sets in. But looking at the backdrop, she had sunshine after mm -hmm. that storm there. Well, we've had a stretch of dry weather <laughs> as well. And we'll keep that dry weather for today, which is good for first day of school attire. No umbrellas needed <laughs> today, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know how hard it is to get everything out the door on that first day and the second day and the third day. Yeah, yeah moms, you know, <laughs> we're talking about. It is clear out there. It's a little warmer than yesterday, 71. Our dew point is 66, and the dew point is the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. 66 is not bad. It's not one of our muggiest feeling starts to the day, but we will see that dew point continuing to rise over the next couple of days. So we're just going to continually get a little hotter and more humid each day. Right now, it's pretty pleasant, actually, in Roxborough and Southern Pines with temperatures in the low to mid 60s, 69 in Goldsboro. But we're now in the 70s in Durham, Raleigh, Fayetteville, Clinton, and uh, South Hill, as well as Rocky Mount and Wilson. Our skies are clear, so we have the top of the tower lit in blue this morning. And I love this photo from Bob Dunbar, Wake Forest. Look at the beautiful pond there um, and that gorgeous sunset glow. So pretty. Um, we would love to see your weather watch photos too. Go to WRL.com and search weather watchers. It's going to be a hot one. Oof, 97 in Raleigh, 96 in Durham and 96 in Fayetteville. And it will definitely feel more like right around 100. Our normal high is 87. So that 97 today is 10 degrees above normal. You know, we kind of got into the routine of that, you know, a few weeks ago and it just kind of felt more normal. Um, but it isn't. It isn't. And it's not going to stick around too long. 98 Wednesday and Thursday. And then we're seeing slightly cooler temperatures Friday, Saturday and into the weekend. The muggy meter is on its way up. It's in the humid zone today and tomorrow, but then tropical Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And that means especially Thursday, we'll be looking at uh, a high heat index. 107 typically would put us in a heat advisory from the National Weather Service. So we'll let you know if they put us under a heat advisory. But today around 100, 102 Wednesday, and still 99 Friday and Saturday. Checking out near record heat. Today's high 97 and the record 98. So we're close to it. And then Wednesday and Thursday, 98 and the record's 100. So we're going to be right up on top of those record highs. Durham Bulls have a home stand this week at game time around 90 today, 93 Wednesday, 91 Thursday. We have a small chance for thunderstorms during game time Thursday, but a better chance maybe overnight. And that's not the only game in town. College football is back on Thursday. NC State plays uh, uh, Western Carolina hot and then maybe a late day storm. Uh, home openers Thursday, of course, for NC State and on Friday for Duke 77 with a much better chance for storms, especially once we get into those uh, nighttime hours. Taking a look at the holiday weekend, temperatures start to drop a little bit, especially for Labor Day. But as the temperatures drop, the chance of rain goes up. I'll walk you through that coming up. Thanks, Elizabeth. Boy, another setback for SpaceX. The reason the mission for four private citizens was canceled this morning and when they are rescheduled to launch into outer space. Plus, a 15-year-old babysitter saves two toddlers and a dog from a house fire, what she credits for keeping everyone safe. For the first time in decades, brain cancer patients have a new way of treating low-grade geolomas. Now, this is thanks in part to innovative research at Duke. The FDA recently approved a new drug providing an alternative to chemotherapy and radiation. WRL health reporter Grace Haba spoke with those at Duke about the journey to get here 16 years in the making. 16 years ago, in labs hundreds of miles apart, Dr. Daryl Bigner with Duke and a team at John Hopkins could only hope a gene mutation discovery would lead to a new cancer drug. I have been working on malignant brain tumors for uh, 50 to 60 years, and uh, it's extremely gratifying to finally uh, have a breakthrough that we know is going to help a significant number of patients. And 16 years ago, Rebecca Richmond had no idea one of those patients would be her. I have an 11-year-old daughter. When I was diagnosed, she was three years old. So a lot of it goes through your mind of the things that you could potentially miss and the things that you want to prepare her for that you might not be around to do so. The Durham mom was one of the first patients in a clinical trial to be given the drug vorasidenib for treatment of her low-grade glioma. There's this mutant protein, this IDH mutant protein, it produces essentially a chemical that causes tumor cells to grow. And what the drug does is it actually inhibits that mutant protein. The drug was shown to help slow tumor growth, giving patients like Richmond more time and another option besides more chemo or radiation. 
it seems to be working great. You know, I'm able to function, carry out work as normal. I'm grateful for every day. I'm blessed with every day. Don't take anything for granted. It's a triumph. Years in the making. It really gives it gives me hope. Grace Haba, WRAL News. A SpaceX mission carrying four private citizens is now scheduled to launch tomorrow morning. The launch originally scheduled for this morning was pushed back after the discovery of a helium lake. Now the mission known as Polaris Dawn is set to take off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida between sometime 3.30 and 7 tomorrow morning. Once in space, the capsule will cross two dangerous bands of radiation on its journey. The crew is also set to attempt a high-risk spacewalk, marking the first time that's been attempted by a non-government astronaut. A babysitter in St. Louis is being recognized for her heroism after saving two toddlers and a dog from a house fire. 15-year-old Savannah Struther was babysitting her neighbor's children last month when that fire started. The teen acted without hesitation, grabbing the one and three year old kids and the dog and getting them to safety. She says her advice for anyone in that situation is to stay calm. Those calm instincts are something Savannah's mother says comes naturally. Very mature she is, has this little motherly instinct in her that is amazing. She's really good with her younger sisters and she is my little partner forever. <laughs> And Savannah was recognized yesterday for her actions with the ceremony at the fire department there. She was given the Hometown Hero Award. Thousands of students will be back in class today at Wake County Public Schools to start the new school year. How bus drivers are preparing to try out new routes this morning. And breaking news, we have this live look in Harnett County where an investigation into a shooting at a gas station is underway. The damage to that store.